Good morning. It is lovely to have you all with us again today. Today we are celebrating harvest and we have our lovely guest speaker, Sue, Sue, uh, Sibony King, who is the manager of the Style Food Bank, who will be speaking to us and telling us about all the wonderful, excellent work they do. Just a reminder that when we, um, when we leave and there is a collection as we leave, all the money which has been donated today is going to be going to the fuel bank, which Sue will speak more about in a few moments. And lastly, just a reminder, we are of course uh, being broadcast onto Facebook and onto, onto YouTube later. So there are microphones around. If they pick you up, please don't give out your PIN number and passwords and all the rest of it because we don't want anybody getting their details stolen. So, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still the poor cry out for justice. Christ, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, let us pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we'll sit for our first reading. Two Corinthians chapter nine. Remember this: whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. <coughs> this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ 
and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be you to God. <coughs> so we are having some audible difficulties, but hopefully the Richard will be uh, upon them. I'm sure if you get the hammer out and give it a good smack, it might make things far better. This is clearly the day for gremlins to be at work in our electrical systems. It has been rather stressful, but never mind. We will persevere and we will carry on. <laughs> so, please be up for the gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak and may be heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm only going to speak very briefly on the gospel because actually we're not here to listen to me today, but listen to Sue. But actually that gospel is quite telling. Please do be seated. <clears throat> it talks about the mustard seed, which is maybe a millimetre or two in width. And yet when it grows, it grows into a great big tree. Jesus uses this as an example for the kingdom of heaven of how it grows and grows exponentially. But actually this harvest, things are a little bit different. Normally we would bring up our offerings, we would bring all the wonderful dry goods, all the tin goods and the fresh offerings to give thanks for the harvest. But this year because of Covid that is obviously not possible. So what I would like to do is I'd like you all to be mustard seeds. I'd like you all to go out and be those mustard seeds. Which is that when you're doing your weekly shop, you'll see near the checkout a trolley or a box or some other receptacle where you can give offerings to the food bank. And what I'd like you to do is, at the start of your shop, go and find this box. On the box, you will see a list of things which are in need. Because the food bank can only operate through the generosity of those who give. But like any donation and any organisation, they sometimes have a surplus of some things. Think baked beans are generally the, the, the persona non grata? Yes! Yeah, we, we have tons of those where we don't have enough of you know, washing up liquid or feminine hygiene products or anything else. So when you go and do your weekly shop, go and find the box or the trolley or whatever the thing is. Find what's there in need, what's on the list. Add it to your own shopping list. And then when you have paid for it, go and put it straight into the box, which means that the food bank will get it directly. But I don't want this just to be the one thing, because otherwise it is just a mustard seed, which won't go very far. But if you allow that to bloom and grow, to be your weekly thing, and as you go out and do your weekly shop, you go out and you make sure you buy one, or if you can do more, and then, yeah, more items, then actually the food bank will grow in prosperity because it will have sufficient to give to all in need. And so we can actually extend this harvest, not just to a Sunday, but to being every week, because every week we are giving. And if each one of us gives a little, it suddenly becomes an awfully large amount. So please, be the mustard seed this year. Be that which we would wish to see. Generosity of spirit, kindness of heart, growing and sharing, not because we get any earthly reward, but because we are doing good and we know that this is a good thing to do. But like I said, and not for me to preach, this is for Sue to come and, 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 and talk to us. So Sue, would you... Come up to Lecton and we'd love to hear what you've got to say. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Father Darcy. Oh, that might make it a bit better. Uh, I was thinking 
My goodness, this is awfully early from someone from a Baptist church. We don't start to have us. But, oh my goodness, was it worthwhile to hear that wonderful organ music. How blessed you all are here. There's so few places that still have them. Ours gave up the ghost many, many years ago. So thank you very much, organist. Um, <laughs> it was absolutely... I almost leapt up and applauded when it finished. It was so nice. So thank you for inviting me. Um, I can add a few things to what Father Darcy's told you, but he is so well briefed already. It's almost as if he's one of our leading volunteers. He really gets it and knows what we're all about. So that's fantastic to have that support. I wanted to start just with a little story. Um, the reading mentioned the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And it immediately reminded me of a donor many years ago when we were doing a manned collection, so our volunteers were giving out shopping lists and collecting food and thanking those that put them into the trolley um, at Asda. And a lady came by, most people were putting one or two items, and please don't feel that I'm pushing you to give more than you can. Every single item, it's like the widow's might. If you don't have much, then you can give very little or not at all if it's a bad week. But this story is a case of real generosity. So one or two items coming in from most people. A lady came by and she put a whole bag load in the trolley. And I said, well, thank you very much. That's amazing. Hold on. Second bag load in the trolley. And I said, oh, my goodness, that's so generous. No, hang on. Third bag went in. Really was without words to thank her enough. And she said, no, don't thank me. She said, while I can, I want to give because you never know what's around the corner and one day it may be me needing to come and take. And I think there, but for the grace of God, go any one of us. Every one of the people that comes to Slough Food Bank has a story and any one of us could have a downturn in our lives and have a story that drives us to come to Food Bank. And isn't it nice to know that if you've put in you know it's there when you need to take out, should that ever happen. So that just struck me as, uh, as that reading. So I thought I'd go through, there's a lot of myths. People don't always understand exactly what the food bank is or how it works. So I'm going to just go through a few points. Um, why do we do what we do? Well, really it's down to Matthew 25, 35, where our Lord says that we fed and clothed and visited him when he was in prison and if we do that to him, anyone we are doing that to him so we feel that that is our duty we've been asked to do that to support those around us with whatever they need when did this all start in december 2010 so this is our 10th year and it was started who by two churches my home church slough baptist church and a, a local African church called the House of God. Um, and w it was set up for all of the people in food poverty in Slough and the surrounding areas. Our motto is, we will never let anyone go hungry on our watch or in our patch. And if our patch extends to take in somebody that is closer to us than maybe somewhere they should be going, we will feed them too. So where does this all happen? It happens across five distribution centres and our warehouse. Since 2012, Seagrow, who own the trading estate, have given us free premises, a massive warehouse and an office attached. And they have supported us now for eight years, more than eight years. So that was incredible. Our distribution centres, we have Slough Baptist Church open twice a week. We have Langley Community Association Hall open once a week, St Andrews in Sippenham once a week, and we've just, at last, got a place back at Britwell, which is a very needy area. Um, and so we're now in the Long Furlong Drive Community Hall, or if any of you know it, it's commonly called the Chicken Ranch. So that was our second week yesterday, and it's already getting busy, which is good. Well, not good that it's busy, but good for us to see that we are needed there. So how do we operate? Well, it all begins with around 160 referral agencies 
that are signed up with us and they can assess the need of the client and then refer them to us. We never just give food to anyone that just pitches up and says, hey, I want some free food. So you can rest assured your donations go to people that have been assessed and it's going to people that really need it. Um, we, have, we did have around 90 volunteers before in 20, 2019 BC before COVID but a lot of them had to shield and isolate immediately, so we lost about 60 straight away, albeit some of them temporarily. We've been plodding on through with less volunteers and much larger numbers of people needing us. Um, we are now up to around 40, 45 volunteers that are back, many of them working remotely, but some that are back in the distribution centres. So we operate with a voucher system. As I mentioned, the referral agencies assess and then they issue a referral, which comes through now electronically so that we're not handling any paper vouchers any longer. The clients will come either to one of the distribution centres if they're able, or since COVID, we have now offered a delivery service as well. That is only for people in extreme circumstances or those that are shielding, isolating, sick and can't come out to us. And again, that means we need even more volunteers. We need drivers to be able to do that. It works, as Father Darcy said, because of people like you, our donors, that keep us going. Uh, the donors tend to be individuals, but many of them will give through groups like schools, churches, businesses, and through the permanent collection points, commonly called a PCP in the trade, um, in all of the shops. We have now got also some direct purchases coming through where people are doing an online shop delivered straight to us and a couple of online platforms, one called Esho, which does all the um, toiletry and household items we, we would like and people can shop from their list and it's delivered and also Amazon um, that one of our young volunteers who understands all this IT stuff was able to set up and so I update her every time we're in need. We have a warehouse system, and this is common across all of the Trussell Trust network of food banks, where everything is weighed in, everything is weighed out, everything is sorted by type and by date. So we know always how much we've got in the warehouse weight-wise, and at the moment we're on around 26 tonnes because it's harvest and it's starting to pick up. We're quite glad, even though we've got stock down in the aisles and it's a little bit difficult to move, uh, we're glad that we've got this extra because the Trussell Trust have predicted that in the coming winter months we will see a 61% increase in footfall of people in need. And they also predicted that that will mean that somebody will, six people will visit a food bank every minute across the whole network. So scary thought, and we don't want to run out, so it's nice to have that back stock that we can keep. We send stuff from, we pre-pack all the food parcels. Now, it used to be that we would pack it as the clients came in to give them a certain amount of choice. Now we pre-pack everything because the clients were just being met at the door and given a pre-packed food parcel. In the last month, we have started to allow people back in gradually. Now that's across all distribution centres. With the cold and the wet weather, we didn't want people queuing outside. So we've had to set up that they can come in, sit separated. Either if they have their own mask, if they don't, we can give them one hand gel, etc. cleaning everything after they've been through. And a one-way system that they come through, sit, get their food parcel and the extras, and then leave through another door. So what do we need going forward, apart from the items on our lists, of course, and again, I can only stress, please only give us the things we need, because if we get lots of things that we don't want, they are taking up volunteer time, volunteer effort, and space in the warehouse for things that we don't really have an immediate use for. So we need beyond that, um, we need your prayer support. We need you to continue to hold us in prayer, which has been happening across this area in the last 10 years, to help us to be able to do what we do, to maintain the support, to maintain the volunteers. And I'm sure that that only comes because we are doing God's will. It was God's will that this was set up. 
it was spoken to a few people from the two churches that set it up that this is what we should do and God has supported us all the way through and whenever there's been a difficult time we've always come out of it smiling and that is proof to me that we are doing his will and still following what he would have us do. We also need more volunteers, although training is really difficult at the moment. It has to kind of just be done on the job, um, which is a bit awkward. Um, we are thinking about setting up some initial training to be done online, but it all takes so much time and we're busy doing so many other things that we'll get there in the end, no doubt. The... Um, the other part of the reading, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. That speaks to me of the faithfulness of God and all of you to keep us going. So he supplies us so that we can keep supplied and keep doing what we're doing. I'll give you a few very quick stats. Um, at the moment, we're doing between 100 and 120 food parcels a week. At the end of March, we peaked at 250 in one week, which was totally unsustainable for us work-wise. Um, we probably had enough food to do it for a while. Uh, it has settled down a little bit. The stats would be much, much higher if it wasn't for the fact that there are many other organisations locally that are supporting people, many other feeding programmes going on. So the statistics I can give you are just part of it. It isn't the whole issue. So if there are lots of other things that aren't being recorded, you can only start to guess at what the real need is. And across the whole country, if the Trussell Trust Network, which is the largest food bank network, if we report two million people, all of those independent food banks and all of those other smaller organisations that are just giving out bits of food here and there aren't feeding into those statistics at all. So the whole problem across the UK is much, much greater than we realise. Many of those smaller groups don't have records and even if they do, they don't feed into anything. As I've mentioned, we record all donations, we record all the food parcels that go out, we record all the clients, the number in their household and the reasons that they have had to come to us. Therefore, when we know the reasons, we're able to offer more than food, we're able to offer other support via the huge network of local organisations and referral agencies that we work with. So if we see that somebody comes to us because of debt, we can refer them to CAP, Christians Against Poverty, and other debt agencies to help support them through that. If they come because of domestic violence, we refer them to a domestic violence organisation. Also, immigration issues, we've got contacts that we can refer them for refugee and visa issues. Substance abuse, we have contacts there that we can refer them into as well. So whatever the issue is, we want to be able to deal with it because it's not about constantly keeping somebody as a charity case. That's not what we want to do. We want to be a helping hand up to give you back your life, your independence, take back control and start to live as we all want to live, not be in a charity case forever. And we think we can only do that by recording all of this and helping them beyond just giving them food, which keeps them in that same place. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you in advance for your donations. And if any of you would like to know more or would like to get in touch about volunteering, then please do. Father Darcy's got my details. Or you can find us on our website. Thank you. Oh, this thing won't go back on. Thank you very much, Sue. Oh, I didn't mention the fuel bank. Do you want to do Do you want to fuel bank? Yes. That'd sorry. be brilliant. Thank you. That's all right. I knew I'd forget because that wasn't on my notes. So Fuel Bank um, was set up because some people would come in and say, oh, don't give me that, I can't cook it, I've got no gas or electricity. So we thought there's a bigger need here. And we looked at what was happening in a few other places and there was some ideas of how that was being dealt with. People had set up something called Fuel Bank. So we stole ideas from here and there, set something up ourselves. And what we can now do is if 
a client is referred and the referral agent says, could you also give gas and electricity? Or if the volunteers overhear them saying they can't cook the food, then we can offer a voucher. Uh, it's £28 for a single and £49 for a family. We give them a voucher code and then they can go and top up, but unfortunately it's only on a prepaid meter. Sadly, most of the people on the lower income scale tend to have prepaid meters, which is much more expensive for them. Um, but we give them the voucher, they can top it up and then they can heat their home, cook their food. We do have to limit that because obviously we'd get through an awful lot of money. So we will allow it once a year and in extreme circumstances we would look at the, the story behind it and maybe allow it once more. But the idea is not to just support them by paying their bills, it's just to get them over a crisis. Everything we do is about crisis and a three-day food parcel for a crisis. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you Sue. I just want to add one thing you'll see Sue mentioned about the referral agencies. Um, I have been um, authorised by the food bank to be able to issue vouchers, uh, the electronic vouchers as they are now. So if, hopefully, nobody here will ever have to, have to come to that stage, but if you do, if you come and speak to me, it is entirely confidential. I don't say, oh, well, so-and-so has been coming along. It doesn't work like that. I will then do, do the paperwork, and we can send you over to the food bank, and they can help you and get you, give you that little bit of help that's going to be needed. Um, and also, if you are aware of anybody who is either um, in Dash or in Colbrook who is in need, please do refer them to me or give, me, give them my details. Let them contact me, because that's what it's there for. The food bank is there to, to actually give that help. Sadly, with the end of furlough and actually with more redundancies probably in the offing, this is something which is going to be used an awful lot more. And I would like to, Holy Program, I'm just going to tell you um, quickly one thing, which is my first sermon when I was first ordained a deacon. My first sermon, the first words out of my lips were, we should shut down all the food banks. Now, I did this deliberately to cause effect, but we should come to a time, this is the 21st century. We are a modern Western country. We are the fifth biggest economy in the world. It is ridiculous in this day and age that the food bank exists. We should be in a stage where everybody has sufficient, but unfortunately we're not. So until that day comes, we will support the food bank, but once they can shut down because they are no longer busy, no offence Sue, but as soon as you're out of a job, I'll be very, very pleased. And <laughs> um, so yeah, so please do give as best you can when you're doing a weekly shop. As I said, the collection is going to go towards the fuel bank for those who need help with the electrics and keeping the gas on. Um, but please do keep them and all the clients in your prayers because that is as needed as anything else. So can I invite those who are able to please stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Please do be seated. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. All good things around us are sent from heaven above. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all your love in giving us an abundant harvest. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people, your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. 
We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards. As you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other, enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, we say together, hear our prayer. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds, that their labor may be for the welfare of all. Lord of all wisdom, hear our prayer. Lord, bless the work of food banks, especially our local slough one. Help us to help them to feed the hungry and minister to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on our church here in Datchet, Lord. We pray for Father Darcy as he leads us in our worship and service to you. We thank you that we can meet together in this lovely building as the people of God, especially during this pandemic. Help us to keep the faith while it continues and bring it to a swift end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, remembering especially those known to us. Knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remember those who have died, whom we trust to your eternal love in the hope of resurrection to new life. Lord of all peace, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones. Comfort them, Lord, and grant them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, Hear our we commend ourselves and all creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Hear accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. So may I invite those who are able to please stand for the peace. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a distant sign of peace. So, peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Bless are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you have created us in your own image and made us stewards of your good creation. Through him you teach us to exult in the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the precious and life-giving crops of the earth. Through him you free us from the slavery of sin, giving him to die upon the cross and to raise again for our salvation. Through him you created your work of new creation. As we look for the new heaven and a new earth in which your righteousness dwells, therefore we join with angels and archangels and give voice to every creature under heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine upward may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, who on the night before he died had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bring before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your loving people. To gather us in your loving arms and bring us with our Lady and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. sound up.
So let us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you have given us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, you are open to us the scriptures, O Christ, and have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. So, quick notices for this week. Morning and evening prayer will be at 9am and 5pm on Facebook and then YouTube straight afterwards. This Wednesday at 11am uh, there will be a Eucharist here, uh, which all are very welcome to. And next Saturday, which is the third Sunday of the month, um, everything gets slightly flipped around. So the 8am BCP will be as normal. We'll then have fun on Sunday morning at St Thomas's at 9.30 and we'll gather here at 11 o'clock. So if you arrive here at 9.30 you'll have a little bit of a wait uh, because we won't begin until 11. Um, and that will be streamed online as well. I have one other thing to ask, uh, well, such a thanks to offer really, rather than ask, which is these beautiful flower arrangements which have appeared over the, over the week. Can I say thank you to Valerie, who was here at 8 o'clock, and also Alan and Pauline, who's hiding behind the, uh, the screen, so I can't see her, because he has feet only, I'm afraid. Thank you so much for the effort you've put in. They look absolutely beautiful and stunning and they really do lift the church, so it is a wonderful thing to have. For those who are online and viewing, you probably can't see any of these flowers, but I can assure you they are most beautiful, and it does have some wonderful autumnal colours uh, um, um, uplifting the whole church. So thank you to all those who are involved. Um, at the end of the month, so in two weeks' time, we'll be having our APCM. Huzzah! Hurrah! Excitement! I can see you're all riveted. Um, we <laughs> We do have some spaces on the PCC, uh, so if you are interested in joining the PCC to help with the running of the church, uh, please do speak to me or speak to uh, Fiona, who can send you the paperwork. Uh, similarly, we have a space for Church Warden. Our lodge, Sandra, who's done so well, is stepping back from Church Warden. And so if you would like to come and step forth and take on the role of Church Warden, uh, then well done, brilliant power to you. <laughs> but please do, again, you speak to me or speak to Elaine or Sand if you'd like to find out more about what the role involves um, and so, or speak to Fiona and we can get paperwork out to you as well. And if we have a plethora of people, I'm sure everyone, you're all riveted and you all want to become the church warden, we'll then have a vote at the APCM. But if we don't have that many, then we may not have to vote depending on how many people step forward. So if you're feeling called to come and help the church in these ministries as either part of the PCC or as a church warden, please do not remain silent. Speak out, let the whole, uh, whole world kind of know that you would like to be on these teams. And then we'll get you sorted, we'll get those all um, sorted out later on in the month. So that's in two weeks' time. So uh, what we'll do is, straight after the service, we'll reset. Um, for those who can't physically come, we'll be Zooming. Um, and then we'll, we'll gather everyone who wants to remain. Basically, on the electoral roll, you have the right to vote. And then we can vote in those who wish to stand for PCC and Church Warden and so on and so forth. I'm not aware of anything else. Elaine, are you aware of anything else? No? Helen, anything? Lovely, super duper. In that case, we'll ask those who are able to please stand for the final blessing. So lastly, Sue, thank you very much for giving up your Sunday to come and talk to us. It was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, let's do that. <laughs> and just a reminder, as you leave, please do give as generously as you can, and actually we can then help those who are really struggling and uh, we'll be a very, very good and positive thing to be able to do. So, the Lord be with you. May God, our Creator, who clothed the lilies and fed the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Freely you have received, freely give. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.